What do you do if you're getting traffic to your site, but people aren't sticking around long enough to convert? We're gonna talk about the six reasons why people are probably leaving your site, what you can do to fix it, and we're starting right now. If you wanna transform your website into a customer or lead generation machine, I'll show you all my best tips, tactics, and secrets to get there fast. Let's dive in. Hey guys, I'm Wes McDowell, web strategist at The Deep End, and if you're not subscribed to our channel yet, you're not gonna wanna miss out on any more videos, so just click the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you never miss another video you need to succeed online. Okay, so you've already gotten people to your site successfully, that's half the battle. The other half of the battle is keeping them around long enough to actually check out what you've got, and get enough information to convert into a customer. So today we're gonna to talk about the six biggest reasons why people may be leaving your site, and more importantly, what you can do to fix it. And the first reason is very simple. They can't immediately see what it is that you offer. Now this is a very common problem. It's still way too common. Um, just because you understand your business inside and out, doesn't mean that new people coming to your site for the first time are going to get it right away. Some people try to get a little too clever with their headline. They try to be funny or witty with it. Um, but really, I'm gonna tell you that clarity beats clever every day of the week. So here's what you do, and it's actually really simple. Just write a very clear headline that says exactly who you help, what you do, and then maybe a subheadline that talks a little bit about how you do that. Now the next big reason is just a bad or outdated design. Now this may seem really obvious, but it's still all too common. Maybe your website is from 10 years ago and it's just not really doing anything to uh, get that kind of trust that a more modern, clean, uncluttered website will get you. And honestly, there are a lot of elements that can contribute to a bad or outdated looking design. Uh, photos being one of them. Maybe they're just really kind of blurry or amateurish, like it looks like you took them with your phone. Or maybe it's the complete opposite. Maybe these are obvious stock photos that people have really gotten used to over the years, like the image of the customer service rep, or that really cliched boardroom handshake type photo. You know, people have seen these a million times over and over again. And what they do is they really kind of can make you look like you're not even a real business with real people behind it. Or maybe there are broken elements on the page. Things aren't laying out correctly or things are just not there that are supposed to be there. Broken images, broken links. And these are also things that can really make your business look more amateur than it really is. And maybe all these elements actually look really great on desktop, but when people are searching on mobile, it's a different story and things really aren't loading correctly there. Now, I don't know if you know, but over 60% of people browsing the internet right now are doing it from their mobile device and that number keeps growing all the time. So you're definitely gonna wanna make sure it not only looks great on desktop, but on mobile as well. So if it's any of those things I mentioned, outdated photos, blurry amateur photos, or obvious stock photos, maybe you can swap those out. That might be the only easy fix here. Uh, beyond that, you're probably looking at a possible redesign, but the good news is there are a lot of cheaper options out there. You don't have to necessarily drop thousands of dollars. There are a lot of really great looking WordPress premium themes that you can easily customize for your business. All right, and number three, you may be turning people off with a lack of visual content. You know, if you've watched videos on this channel before, you already know that 80% of people coming to your site are really only skimming, they're not really reading the whole page. So it's really a missed opportunity not to include plenty of visuals that not only look good and kind of break up the page, but they can also act as, you know, visual cues telling people exactly what it is you offer. So whenever you can illustrate one of your key points with a visual that goes along with it, that makes it just really easy to grasp uh, in a second, that you should always try to do that. So go ahead and add more visuals, you know, photos or icons are great. And there are also ways of making your text more visual as well and skimmable. So, you know, keep the paragraph short and use headlines and lists and, you know, use bold and italics to really uh, emphasize key points whenever possible. Okay, this next one is a big one because it can mean people abandoning your page before they even ever see it, and that is, of course, page load speed. So I don't know if you know this, but you know, 40% of people will actually leave your site if it doesn't load in under three seconds. So I want you, right after this video, to go to Google PageSpeed Insights to test the load speed of your own site 
and see how it stacks up. Not only will it give you a basic score, but it's also gonna give you a list of improvements you can make. And don't worry, they are gonna probably look technical, so you may or may not be able to do those yourself. You may have to give that list to your developer or at least hire one on a website like Upwork to kind of make those changes for you. And remember this as well, it's all about perception. So when I, what I mean by that is there are a lot of different ways that you can make your website feel faster than it actually is. You know, things like lazy loading, where the elements at the top of the page actually load first, and then everything down the page loads as you go down the page. So there's not such a strain on the entire website to load all at once. And it just ends up feeling much faster to your site visitor, so they'll stay around longer. And there's actually a free WordPress plugin called BJ Lazy Loader that should help you accomplish this in just a matter of seconds. And there's actually quite a few uh, free plugins for WordPress that'll help you speed up your page. So maybe you try that first before you take that list to your developer if you wanna save a little bit of money. Okay, next on the list is cliched or jargony copy. If your copy doesn't connect with your customers in a meaningful way, or if they have to try to de decode it, they're probably not gonna stick around long enough to actually figure it out. So really resist that urge to try to impress by using the biggest words, and don't also expect that your customers know as much about your industry as you do. And there's actually a really simple fix for this. Just write the way you speak. Conversational copy actually works great across most industries unless you're you know, heavy into the B2B uh, medical or government space. And even then, I wouldn't get too informal with it, but I would definitely try to write a little more conversationally than you think you should. And I actually have a really actionable tip you can use to get more conversational copy, and that involves record yourself talking about your business as if you're talking about it to a friend. Talk about what makes your business unique or special and why they should care about it. Then you can take that recording and use it as the basis for your copy. And when you're actually writing that copy, forget about all the rules you learned about grammar back in school. You can use sentence fragments, contractions, and slang. In fact, it's gonna generally help you connect on a much deeper level with your customers than if you were to write your website like a term paper. Okay, number six, we have option overload. Now, while you may think that your customers and site visitors want a lot of options, the truth is providing too many options can really cripple your sales and your ability to generate leads from your website. So what you should do instead is really narrow down your focus into only the most important things that people are really gonna need to know before they'll be interested in what you offer. So include a short overview about what exactly your offer is, three main benefits, that they're gonna receive from your offer, a list of features that show them exactly what they're gonna get, and then some nice reviews and testimonials. And then end it all with a really strong, clear call to action telling them exactly what to do next. You know, people actually love to be told what to do next because it takes the guesswork right out and it makes the path forward very clear. So I hope that sheds some light on what may be going wrong on your own website and some actionable ways that you can take to fix it. But now I wanna hear from you, and I wanna know which of these tips uh, are you most excited to put onto your own website. I wanna know all about it. Of course, any questions you have or comments, uh, just put it in the comment section below. I'll check them all out, and I'll answer all the questions that I possibly can. And I wanna keep hanging out with you a couple times a week for these videos so you learn as much as you possibly can about your website, so if you're not subscribed yet, just click the little circle icon right over here to subscribe to this channel. And if you're ready to step it up to a more strategic website, like all the stuff we've been talking about today, uh, go ahead and schedule a free strategy session just between you and me. You can get that by clicking this little box right over here. All right, guys, I'm Wes McDowell for The Deep End, and I'll see you in the next video.